this presentation is about ultra fast inclusion analysis with the RLI Spark, a Spark OES spectrometer. Um, today I will start the presentation with the inclusions and the importance to control them. And then uh, I will continue with the principle of this inclusion analysis uh, with the RLI Spark, uh, followed by uh, some examples of application of uh, inclusion analysis with the RLI Spark. And finally, I will present you the latest software tool for uh, inclusion analysis. So the first section of this presentation is about inclusion and the importance to control them. What are the inclusions? Inclusions are small particles embedded in the steel matrix. Uh, they can be formed in the liquid steel by chemical reaction, and they are called uh, endogenous inclusion, or they can be due to contact with refractories and slag. In this case, they are called exogenous inclusions. Uh, most frequently, they are called non-metallic inclusion or NMIs. These inclusions have different compositions, they can be oxides of different types, uh, sulfides, silicates, nitrites, and even others. Um, these inclusions have wide range of sizes, from microscopic to macroscopic, and also a large variety of morphologies and structures. You have some example on the right side pictures. So these pictures are not, uh, of course, uh, optical emission pictures, but uh, scanning electron microscope picture of uh, inclusion extra extracted by leaching uh, process. The importance uh, of the inclusion is due to several things. First, the inclusions are always present in steel. Uh, their extent depends on the steel grade and on the production process. Second, the inclusion strongly affects the steel quality and the production process. Inclusion affects the steel quality. So, uh, steel properties st strongly depend on the inclusion content. Some examples are the resistance to fatigue, the weldability, formability or the machinability. Uh, some of the inclusions are needed to impart certain properties. Uh, for example, manganese sulfide for machinability of free cutting steel. However, many are unwanted because they have negative impact on the steel quality and the process stability. Uh, inclusion affect the steel quality. What are the consequences of a bad inclusion contents? Uh, there can be different uh, possibilities from non-conform mechanical properties to failures of the finished product or to steel defects appearing at the rolling mill. Uh, this is what we see on the picture. What happens when the hard inclusion go through rolling mill? Uh, as you can see on the uh, lower right picture, um, there is creation of some uh, defect of the matrix due to the fact that the inclusion is not broken. And uh, this kind of defect is uh, happening in the direction of the rolling direction. So, these kind of things frequently results in very costly bad heats. In other words, heats that are scrapped or degraded or customer claims. I said that uh, inclusion also affect the process. This is a famous example. Uh, actually, a very common issue uh, uh, for the steel makers. Uh, clogging of the submerged entry nozzle um, is taking place when aluminum is added uh, for the deoxidation of the steel. Uh, this causes the formation of aluminum oxide inclusion that crystallize and clog the nozzle. So, 
uh, steel makers, you can see a few pictures, no? that's very interesting. Here you see uh, the effect of uh, uh, inclusion uh, uh, crystallized in this uh, nozzle. Uh, so the steel makers have to change that uh, process is interest interrupted and in many cases some steel has to be scrapped. So this is this is all very costly. So how to reduce the cost of the inclusion analysis? So uh, trust the steel makers, uh, they try ev everything and use all the possible analytical methods to control the inclusion and avoid quality and process problem. The modern and probably most known techniques nowadays is uh, is uh, SAMEDX. Uh, this is really the reference technique uh, combining scanning electron microscopy and energy dispersive X-ray fluorescence. Uh, this technique has the advantage of uh, being quantitative and compliant with inclusion analysis norms. However, it has a main drawback. The analysis cycle is long. Uh, it, with SAMEDX, it takes, in best case, one, about one hour, but in many cases, up to several hours for sample polishing and analysis. So this is, this is too long if the steelmaker was, uh, wants to uh, rapidly control the inclusions. A faster alternative is given by the optical emission spectrometer. The RL iSpark, our latest generation of instrument, combines high performance elemental analysis and the most advanced inclusion analysis of its category. Concentrations and inclusion data can be obtained from the same measurement. The benefits of using DRL iSpark are several. In the analytical workflow, it is an ultra fast analysis that takes about one minute for an average of two measurements, exactly what the steel makers used to doing with an optical emission spectrometer. It is a two in one analysis. It means that composition and inclusion are obtained at the same time. Sample preparation is fast because the standard OES preparation is used, uh, which means that no polishing is needed. Uh, overall, the analysis workflow is short. It takes five to 10 minutes from sampling liquid steel to obtaining the results. And a high throughput of sample analysis is possible uh, because optical emission is very quick. Hundreds of samples can be analyzed typically per day. There are actually more benefits of using the ARLI Spark for inclusion analysis. Uh, one is a low investment cost because the standard OES instrument is used. There is no extra maintenance. The standard one applies. The instrument is easy to operate, uh, which means an uh, operator uh, does not need to have special skills for this uh, inclusion analysis. And then the method we deliver are turnkey. They are factory customized and ready for use at delivery of the instrument. Finally, the uh, inclusion analysis with the RLI Spark is suitable for automation. Uh, which means that uh, we can automate the instrument with an ARL sample manipulation system. You have a picture on the right side of uh, an ARL iSpark automated with SMS 2300. So in conclusion, with the ARL iSpark, there are more reasons to perform inclusion analysis than not. In a three years long project on inclusion analysis, several European steel companies, uh, you have some name on the bottom of the slide, 
Uh, several European steel companies have evaluated the benefits of inclusion analyses with optical emission spectrometer. They concluded the following. First, saving for one avoided customer clay saves uh, corresponds to 100 kilo dollar in average. Second, saving for one avoided by heat corresponds to about 130 kilo dollar in average. And third, in a year, a steel plant has to face typically five claims and several bad heats. This means that avoiding claims and heats problems allow savings of more than half a million dollars per year, uh, which is clearly much more than the price of the optical emission spectrometer. The European steelmakers also concluded that the best opportunities for savings on inclusion costs were at secondary metallurgy, where inclusion analysis allows to take corrective action on the inclusion uh, contents. So uh, steel treatments and uh, can be adapted in order to uh, correct for bad inclusion contents. Another place is at continuous casting, where optical emission uh, gives early warning for problems like plugging, the problem we've seen just before. And on the final product, where optical emission is a low cost inclusion control method. So these are the three places where steelmakers recommended to use optical emission inclusion analysis. There are, of course, other possibilities to use uh, this technique. Now we have discussed uh, inclusion and cost. Uh, let's go to the principle of the inclusion analysis with the ARL iSpark. I say with the ARL iSpark because um, there are several ways to do that. I think our method is unique and uh, I prefer presenting uh, the specificity of our technology and methods. So the basic principle of signal acquisition for inclusion analysis is the same as the one used for elemental analysis. That's why the two analyses can be combined in the same measurement. Thousands of single sparks are repeated at high pace between the electrodes and the sample. At each single spark, a small part of the sample is ablated and atomized and a light pulse is emitted. This light pulse is characteristic of the atoms present in the sample and of their quantity. The light pulses are then dispersed into spectrometer optics uh, in the emission wavelengths of the elements contained in the sample, and they are then transformed into electrical signal, which are characteristics of the elements in the photo multiplying detectors. Uh, at the end of uh, this acquisition, uh, single spark signals, so-called single spark signals, are uh, obtained. Signal processing is where elemental analysis and uh, inclusion analysis differ. For the standard OES elemental analysis, the single spark signals are integrated before uh, being transform into, uh, into uh, concentration uh, by using calibration curves. For the inclusion analysis, the single spark signals undergo st statistical treatment and calculation uh, in order to obtain inclusion uh, data and properties. To understand the principles of the inclusion analysis, the single spark signal are represented in run charts. 
uh, with intensity on the vertical axis and number of the single spark on the horizontal axis. Here is an example of an aluminum run, run chart. On this chart, the peaks are the signals due to the inclusion. You see here different uh, peaks uh, at, at uh, obtained uh, with different uh, single sparks. Um, the peaks are the signals uh, due to the inclusion that contain at least some aluminum. The intensity of the signal of the peak is proportional to the size of the inclusion. In the practice, peaks are identified as signals with an intensity higher than a threshold. Uh, in many cases, we use three sigma to discriminate peaks from noise, but the threshold can also be set higher when only a larger inclusion needs to be detected. On this other slide, the run chart of the element calcium has been added. When a coincidence of an aluminum peak with a calcium peak, like here, is observed, it signifies that the inclusion contains both aluminum and calcium. The inclusion is therefore likely a calcium aluminate. When no coincidence peak exists on the calcium channel, it signifies that the inclusion contains aluminum but no calcium. In this case, the inclusion is likely an aluminum oxide. So this is the basic principles of the inclusion analysis, where we count number of peaks and number of coincident peaks in order to evaluate the number of inclusion and their compositions. And uh, second, uh, we measure the peak intensities to evaluate the size of the inclusion. The raw data presented here in the form of run charts on uh, the various element channels. Uh, the raw data is transformed into inclusion data or properties uh, by using statistical algorithms, so called SPARTAT algorithms, some mathematics, and some chemistry. Two types of data can be obtained the simple inclusion data or properties and the advanced inclusion data and properties. We'll see the difference in the following slides. At this point, I think it's useful uh, to tell a few things about practical aspects of the inclusion analysis with uh, the Spark OES. Uh, the first thing uh, to mention is sample preparation. So there are several ways to prepare a sample for optical emission. Uh, as you know, uh, milling is uh, recommended in many cases. Uh, um, and it, it is the case also for the inclusion analysis when advanced inclusion data and pro properties want to be uh, evaluated. Uh, it is also, of course, the best choice for the simple uh, data and properties. The reason is that uh, by milling the sample, all contamination of the surface um, is avoided. You know, contaminating um, surface with grinding aluminum oxide paper uh, could uh, could uh, lead to the situation where you uh, count an increased number of aluminum oxide inclusion uh, during the analysis. So, <clears throat> grinding is normally avoided, but it's still possible and suitable for the simple inclusion data and properties, which are less quantitative than the advanced ones. Some details of the analysis. In this uh, table, I put the duration uh, for one one measurement analysis, two measurement analysis, and six measurement analysis. Uh, you can see for one, uh, what we call, how we call run, 
22 seconds allow you to get the concentrations and the inclusion results for two measurements about one minute is needed um, two measurement is typically um, the type of analysis that steel makers uh, used to doing on the steel samples um, in in the production control so in this case one minute is uh, still the time necessary uh, like for a normal optical emission analysis. Uh, interesting is to look at uh, what surface of the sample is evaluated with our technique. So for two measurements, uh, it's about uh, 40 square millimeter uh, of the surface where we look for inclusions. Um, as you know, uh, in optical emission, uh, material is ablated. So uh, the analysis is, is not a two-dimensional method, but a three-dimensional one. So we can talk about volume evaluated as well. And in the case of a two-measurement analysis, the volume is 0.08 cubic millimeter typically. This corresponds to a mass that is evaluated of the steel sample of about 0.66 milligrams. Finally, I want to mention that um, the domain of application is limited to micro inclusion with size of about 0.5 to 15 milli micrometer, excuse me, the typo, uh, micrometer depending on the type of inclusion and the sample. So there is no way to look at macro inclusion with the Spark OES. Let's now move to some examples of application of the inclusion analysis with the ARL iSpark. Uh, first, uh, the simple inclusion data and properties. Uh, this is a qualitative evaluation of the number and size by inclusion type. Uh, the, the properties and data of the inclusion are obtained in the form of peak counts and uh, counts of peak coincidences, exactly what I showed you before. Intensity is also used in this kind of evaluation to classify the inclusion as SML or small, medium and large. Uh, the normal way to work with this uh, kind of uh, data is to use reference samples. In other words, compare results with those obtained on known samples, typically good ones and bad ones, in terms of the inclusion content. You have here an example of a determination of uh, number of peaks for uh, low alloy steel samples. You see different elements that have been evaluated in terms of small inclusion number, medium size inclusion number, and large size inclusion number for total number on the right side. These numbers are per cubic millimeter. Uh, peak coincidences are also evaluated. Uh, these are the different uh, coincidences. I think Kaijan will explain you a little bit the nomenclature in the live demo after this presentation. And also here you can discriminate small, medium and large inclusion and count them, or you can just consider the total of the uh, small, medium and large. So this SML, small, medium, large classification is very interesting. Um, inclusion criticality depends on the size. So not only the number of inclusion is important, but also their size. Uh, so normally, uh, large inclusions are more critical than medium ones, which are more critical than the small ones. So here you see how we do that. The relative sizes, S, M, L, are obtained by using different detection thresholds, as you can see on this calcium run chart. One threshold to uh, detect the small, 
one to detect the medium and one to detect the large inclusions. You can do that on all the elements and at, at the end you obtain the counts for the different categories of inclusion. So this is very interesting knowing that uh, criticality is not the same in all the steel grades or for all the customers. So with this kind of method, you can adjust the control parameter uh, to the need. For example, for the less demanding steel grades or customer specification, you will count only the large inclusion. And for very demanding grades or customer specification, you will count all the inclusion, small, medium, and large. In this example, we have counted peaks and peak coincidence in samples from two different heats, of course, of the same steel grade. So, um, uh, maybe not necessary to mention that if you measure them with optical emission, you would measure the same composition. So, uh, as you can see in the run charts, the sample of heat one and heat two have pretty different uh, inclusion content. So by using very simple algorithm to count the peaks, aluminum, total number of peak, oxygen, calcium, sulfur peaks, and some coincident peak corresponding to aluminum oxide, calcium aluminate, uh, calcium oxide, and sulfide, uh, we very quickly realized that the inclusion content is very different in the two samples. The sample of heat one contains only Calcium inclusion, uh, oxides and sulfides mostly, while the sample of heat two contains mainly calcium aluminates and aluminum oxides. So very, very different content of the two samples, which have uh, probably some consequences in some applications or for some customers. Uh, app, uh, an application for that is, of course, steel quality, but it can be used also to uh, control the inclusions and reduce nozzle clogging and problems at casting. So, let me now just come back to uh, nozzle clogging. Um, We've mentioned that uh, inclusion analysis with optical emission is allows to reduce nozzle clogging. So, uh, just back to uh, how it is caused. Uh, when aluminum is added uh, for um, deoxidizing the steel, uh, there is generation of aluminum oxide inclusion. This inclusion uh, will crystallize and clog the nozzle. Now you have an example of an aluminum oxide inclusion. So, uh, steel makers normally perform some steel treatment. They add calcium uh, compounds to modify the aluminum inclusion into uh, aluminum, a calcium aluminate inclusion that will that are liquid in the liquid steel and will move to the slag. Um, when you do that, the consequence is that. Uh, you reduce the, of course, the risk of clogging and extend the nozzle lifetime. You have here an example of an inclusion that is modified from aluminum oxide to calcium aluminate. Now, when steelmakers put uh, calcium uh, additive in excess, uh, there might be the formation of calcium sulfide inclusion. Uh, that are also problematic because they pose problem at the casting. So the solution to control that and get only uh, calcium aluminate inclusion and no aluminum oxide or no calcium sulfide inclusion is to control the, ad the addition of uh, the calcium compounds by monitoring the peaks and coincidence corresponding to uh, aluminum oxide calcium aluminate and calcium sulfide. So uh, the idea is that when aluminum oxide inclusion increase and calcium aluminate inclusion decrease, 
uh, you have to add more calcium um, compounds. And when calcium sulfide increases and aluminum, uh, calcium aluminate decreases, uh, less uh, calcium compounds have to be added uh, in order to have a, a smooth process. Uh, all this can be done uh, optimally when using uh, statistical process control uh, software, SPC software. We'll see um, the application uh, at the end of this presentation where you can, uh, you can control uh, the level of these different inclusion in a very simple way. Now, let's see a few examples of the advanced inclusion uh, data and properties that can also be obtained with uh, optical emission. Uh, these, this is a more quantitative evaluation of many different properties uh, by inclusion type. So, some examples are number of inclusion. I don't say number of peaks in this case, but number of inclusion, size and size distribution in micrometer of uh, the inclusion. Um, this size uh, is what we call the uh, equivalent spherical diameter or ESD because uh, the optical emission is a three dimensional uh, techniques that allows to see um, not only the, the inclusion from uh, the surface, but also in the volume. What we can also typically evaluate is the volume fraction for a different type of inclusion, their concentration, and also special application is um, a determination of the total oxygen content. Uh, this is an example uh, of uh, inclusion size distribution uh, obtained with uh, these kind of methods. You have here different type of inclusion, alumina, calcium aluminate, spinel, uh, calcium sulfide, manganese sulfide, and you have for different size classes and for all the size classes together, uh, the number of inclusions that are monitored. Another uh, example is the inclusion volume fraction. Again, for the same inclusion, uh, now you have an evaluation of the fraction uh, of the volume for the inclusion in the different uh, classes and for the total. An interesting application was uh, obtained with a customer. We measured two of his uh, uh, low alloy steel samples. Uh, actually, we measured the aluminum oxides to check their distribution. Uh, the two samples uh, were produced with different scrap qualities. The first one in blue uh, where is a sample taken from a heat produced with sorted scrap, so uh, in principle scrap with uh, less, um, um, uh, with, with more purity, and the, the red one are heat, a sample from a heat produced with unsorted scrap, so um, scrap of different sources. So the red one is in principle cheaper than the blue one. As you can see on the uh, graph, uh, there are more inclusion which are monitored uh, with the heat produced with uncertain scrap. And uh, there are also uh, more of the uh, biggest inclusion. So clearly, a cleaner steel is obtained with better scrap. So, Considering this, uh, you can make very uh, interesting um, things. Uh, when purchasing scrap, uh, you can really dedicate the best scrap for the best steel quality or grades and use the lowest quality of scrap for uh, less demanding application and customers. So this is also a way to adjust your cost. I mentioned uh, total oxygen content. With Kiel Steel uh, uh, optical emission inclusion analysis offers very interesting 
uh, possibility to determine extremely low level of oxygen, which are typically not possible with the standard uh, calibration method. Uh, examples of uh, type of steel where oxygen has to be measured at very low concentration uh, is given in this table. So typically, um, cases where oxygen is around 10 to 40 ppm of oxygen. So normally the detection limit of the instrument does not allow measuring that with uh, good precision and accuracy. The solution is given by the inclusion analysis and we calculate the oxygen concentration from the content of oxide. Here you have an example of samples, uh, keel steel samples, uh, from continuous casting mode that were measured uh, with a combustion analyzer and with the Spark OES. You can see all the concentration, all the samples are below 30 ppm oxygen, so normally not possible to analyze by optical emission. But with the inclusion analysis, we are able to obtain a good match of the concentration obtained with the combustion analysis down to very low um, amount of oxygen. On the right side, uh, the, we have measured certified uh, uh, low alloy steel uh, samples. So we compare the Spark OES result in blue with the certified value uh, of the samples. And here again, you can see that for all the measured samples and down to a few ppm, there is an excellent match uh, with the reference. So, uh, very interesting. Uh, the, the standard method for this kind of analysis is normally um, uh, combustion analysis. And uh, we see here that optical emission uh, offers an interesting alternative or is a good candidate to replace the this costly uh, kind of analysis. Uh, nothing is possible without software, at least for the analysis. So before finishing, let me briefly present our software tools dedicated to the inclusion analysis. Um, note that uh, some of these tools will also be part of the demonstration by Kaizen in a few minutes. So the software tools, uh, there are different things. Uh, at the heart of the inclusion analysis, there is the analytical software OXAS. So um, the what we call the Spark that features, which are useful for the inclusion analysis, are fully integrated in um, the analytical software, which allows, for example, parameterization of the inclusion analysis algorithm and methods. Now there are also uh, a few uh, options, software option, uh, which belong to uh, the so-called SparkDAT software suite. Uh, the first one is the Spark Explorer. Uh, there is also the inclusions report, the ternary diagram and SPC. The next slide, i give a brief uh, uh, overview of these different tools. The Spark Explorer first, it's a set of software modules for on offline work. Uh, we mentioned a lot um, the necessity to uh, analyze inclusion online, so during the process for steel makers, but sometime offline is needed. Uh, example, uh, to scrutinize the raw inclusion data when there is a, a quality or a process issue. So sometimes the inclusion data and properties monitored online are not sufficient um, to um, uh, understand the, the problem or the cause of the problem. And uh, it's good to have a look at the raw data. Or also scrutinize the raw inclusion data when inclusion analysis results are ambiguous. This may happen. I think uh, it happens as well uh, with some EDX technique. 
Uh, of course, it's very useful uh, if you want to optimize the inclusion analysis uh, parameters, for instance, uh, the detection threshold, or when you want to compare the raw inclusion data of different samples and measurements. So, you see there are a few uh, different screens of this tool, uh, different, different uh, modules. One uh, we call the quick preview. It's a very nice uh, tool where you can have a very quick comparison of the run charts on the different elements, eventually on different samples as well. You can also see uh, the uh, histograms, uh, the, the size distribution of the inclusion uh, uh, in terms of element. So here, of course, you have a module to look at the histograms and you have module to look at the run charts. Uh, especially this one is interesting because you can compare many, many different um, uh, channels or samples. Kajan will um, briefly present you this tool afterwards. Another tool is called the Inclusions Report. It's a digest of the inclusion information. Um, you can see here a few uh, pages of this report. Um, I think Kajan will also uh, scroll through the different uh, things that can be uh, reported in that, but you can see there are um, different type of uh, information, uh, including uh, peak and peak uh, coincidence counts or um, some histograms of uh, the distribution or even the ternary diagram. So this report is ideal when you need to report the results of an inclusion analysis to the concerned people who can be quality manager, of course, but also R&D and process scientists or defectology specialists. And typically, some people who also would like to the results of a SEM EDX analysis. This report uh, can be con customized to uh, meet your need, uh, like it is the case with the inclusion analysis method. I mentioned the ternary diagram, so phase diagrams of inclusion systems with three chemical components, for example, aluminum oxide, calcium oxide, and magnesium oxide. So these three compounds are uh, on the corners of the triangle. These kind of uh, diagrams are frequently uh, used to check inclusion modification in Used by steel treatment. Just what I mentioned before, adding calcium and seeing along the process include aluminum oxides being transformed into um, calcium aluminates. So these kind of uh, diagrams are very popular, um, almost the natural language of inclusion specialists. So in these diagrams, uh, you can see different things, of course. Uh, the size classes uh, that can be customized, size classes in micrometer, uh, the average composition in the form of numbers and a point on the ternary diagram, and class frequency, so number of inclusion in the different classes. Uh, you can uh, set up a different type of ternary diagram uh, based on the uh, inclusion content or of your sample or just uh, based on their grade. And finally, uh, SPC software, statistical process control, uh, which is, which is uh, actually a third party software called Synergy 1000. Um, this is used for online control of inclusion uh, in the most easiest in the most easy way. So critical inclusions, like in the right hand side diagram, a large aluminum inclusion. Um, critical inclusion um, properties um, can be exported to this tool. 
and for optimal control of the steel quality and the process stability. Uh, this uh, kind of SPC tool is perfect for the steel plant that wants to minimize uh, non-compliant products, rework and scrap, or um, to minimize process issues like the clogging. Um, you have an example, as I mentioned on the right side, we have monitored the large aluminum oxides, uh, which are the most critical. Um, here are the different samples measured, number of uh, aluminum oxides measured, uh, and uh, USL is uh, what we call the, the upper specification limit above which um, a number are considered to be uh, too high. So in this example, uh, for sample number 30, uh, it was found that the number of aluminum inclusion is above the upper specification limit, meaning that uh, the content of inclusion is not compliant. A few concluding remarks, and then uh, we can go for a few questions if there are. Uh, DRLI Spark is the first instrument steelmakers needed for inclusion analysis. It allows almost real time control of the inclusions in the process in up to hundreds of samples per day, and the investment cost is low. The RL Spark is ready to use at delivery with um, the inclusion analysis method. It is the solution to minimize the cost of the inclusion and guarantee steel quality and the smoothly running process. Everyone, uh, welcome to my demo lab uh, remotely. So here, uh, it's uh, our demo lab in the factory in Switzerland, uh, equivalent. And you will see this uh, um, ice park instrument. That's the one we are going to measure some samples. Okay, you see other, other ice park instrument depending on the application difference. So, um, to be able to see clearly how I operate and uh, measure a sample, I will place now the camera very close to the stand. Okay, so you will be able to see when I am uh, operating. I will just uh, start to measure um, two samples, as we will normally do. Make one uh, inclusion analysis. I select the task, the method, and the type the sample name. Okay, start. Well, it's not too nice. So you will see the sample. Um, I use the milli machine, so it's prepared like a lot. It's a lollipop sample. As normal uh, analysis, I make two runs.
here in the analysis, we have the list of the results for inclusion. But for the moment, there's no results yet because the way we treat the data, you will get it after the analysis. When you finish, so you see the results now. And uh, in order to compare something, I make another sample analyze with a uh, different type. You will see. Now it's sample two. Now, let's finish. So, what you can see from here? Besides the normal concentration results, here are some listed results for inclusion analysis. We have listed here like uh, peak count for aluminum, uh, for calcium, for, for magnesium, which are most interested element for forming inclusions. And here, peak count total is the total number. And we normalize the number to the um, cubic millimeter. So uh, for that way, you are able to compare between different uh, method conditions. And uh, we have a small, medium, large groups for the peak count. Uh, that's depending on the threshold defined according to the intensity level. So it's like a qualitative size separations. And uh, then after that, you have also some listed uh, inclusion type we defined. For example, alumina or calcium aluminate uh, or spina. This kind of number, we can also count that and normalize to cubic millimeter uh, with the average from the two rounds. We are also able to say uh, combine all the uh, define the oxide, then we see what would be the oxygen in the number and uh, what would be the sulfides in the number. That's for this type of the method, we are able to count the number. In another type of the method, another option of the method, we are able to count the concentration. Well, anyway, here we have the calcium aluminum ratio. So that is one parameter very useful when you want to uh, count uh, uh, to to evaluate what would be the situation with the calcium addition um, related with the uh, uh, melt treatment. So that's the result you can obtain as normally you can obtain for the concentration. And those results. If we, uh, they are automatically saved once we click the finish, if you remember. Those results can be exported like uh, in Excel. If you want to uh, study it uh, to, for example, I just uh, put into a desktop. And uh, okay, from method. 
is from Tiffany. Format, we can choose the format. OK. So if you want to treat the results in the third program, third part program, like uh, Excel, uh, which is quite uh, common for the people to use, then you can treat the data like that. You can export, or it is possible to print report. Depending on the purpose, you can print the report as different format, only for concentration or for the inclusion result. Now we, I will show you with the inclusions report. Uh, I print only with the preview. So we see from the uh, screen. Okay. So now you will see here are the report. Depending on the different options, of course, the content of the report will be different. But uh, basically, with our inclusions report, the beginning of it will always showing you the sample and analysis details. For example, here, you see the details of the analysis and the calculations, how many runs we made, how many sparks we used to make the statistical calculation. Uh, as you know, for the this inclusion analysis with OES, uh, the, the fundamental part is a statistic study. So we need to know exactly which data set we used actually. And uh, then you have this like uh, updated uh, the surveys, updated volume or mass. So those are very interesting parameters if you would like to uh, compare with other uh, technique for inclusion analysis. Then after that, you will have the field we keep for showing you the sample composition because with the inclusion analysis with OES, uh, it's important to know the sample quality or sample type. Sometimes mm, with different types, um, the, the conclusions can be totally different, even with the uh, same uh, amount of the inclusion content. Then you have the field of main indices. Here, you will be able to put whatever the most important results uh, of inclusion to you, uh, according to your purpose. Uh, for example, here, I just uh, showed the aluminum, uh, and the calcium peak count, uh, calcium aluminum ratio, and uh, oxide uh, concentration and sulfide concentration. Then you have another field called a factor where you can, oh, here this factor is one parameter suggested by some um, European steel makers. And according to them, this can be used as the cleanliness index for the process control. This factor is defined as the insoluble fraction multiply the number of peaks for one specified element. So that means uh, this uh, parameter is not only considering the peak count for each element, but also, but also um, considering the size of the um, inclusions because the size of inclusion related to the insoluble fraction, uh, the intensity level. So uh, when you have the um, bigger size, you will have higher intensity level and that is calculated this part. So that is one parameter. Then you have this commonly understandable uh, parameter for inclusion concentration. It's just those we have uh, by default about uh, 11 inclusion types we predefined. And uh, of course, uh, the type of inclusions can be added or deleted according to your wish. That's what we call customization. 
and the, then you have also this uh, the quite simple part, the uh, quite simple results. Uh, we call it the, the standard or the simple um, option of the inclusion analysis because it's count as just a peak event with single element or with uh, some uh, coincidence or non coincidence between the elements. Uh, for example, here means the coincidence between aluminum and oxygen, and here means uh, coincidence between aluminum and oxygen and non coincident to calcium. So, by this way, we count the peak number and we are able to, if we are experienced, we are able to um, estimate what type of inclusions uh, we can get. So, of course, the, the purpose for this part. Um, if without uh, at the, uh, the option of advanced inclusion analysis, then from this part, uh, people are already able to get um, some in, uh, information regarding the content of the inclusions. If you have the option of the advanced one, then based on the results from here, you can start to calculate the concentration of certain inclusion types, which evaluated from here. Okay, and for the same set of predefined inclusion types, uh, you have this uh, calculation for the size distribution. Um, now we have quantitative, if you remember before, for this one, we have the size, but it's a qualitative, small, medium, large, according to the intensity level. Now we have the quantitative size separation um, from the scale of macro. So for the different inclusion types, with different uh, with uh, some groups of the um, uh, macrons, you are able to see this table. And of course, the number is also normalized to cubic millimeter. The groups can be uh, defined by user um, if as you want. You can even put it higher, or you can make uh, it, uh, for example. Uh, one to three, three to five, something like that. Well, that's not uh, um, fixed. Well, if you don't like to have the table, then you have this plot. Uh, it's possible to plot all the 11 inclusion types that uh, here in this report, uh, I just made some example. So you will see this uh, size distribution plot. And you can see in order to show some nice plot, actually the uh, the groups of the uh, size discrimination, I have the different uh, setup from here. So that's something, as you can see, it's flexible. Then afterwards, you have the possibility to have ternary diagram. That is when you have additional option of the report. That's called the TD option uh, for the report. So if you have that one, then you are able to make this ternary diagram phase, which I'm sure is quite familiar for the uh, metallurgist. Uh, they normally use this for the melt uh, process control. Uh, so for example, here, we also only put uh, three types of the inclusion system to, to check. This aluminum calcium magnesium or aluminum calcium titan. So in case there, um, for clearly these samples, they don't have quite titan uh, at the uh, treatment. And uh, here you have also another type is uh, aluminum calcium oxide with the magnesium sulfide. That's just an example. Uh, inside this uh, ternary diagram, we will have the size this um, separation based on the color on the dot. 
and uh, at the bottom you have the table because it's difficult to count inside the plot okay and afterwards uh, of course it's the most important uh, feature of the gd is the relative composition between the three components so here we have the average concentration of the three components uh, calculated here that's this part then the last part of the field is uh, one additional information to the to you to customers uh, it's for the inclusion volume fraction and that you already saw it from the powerpoint of uh, ramat so here uh, normally we have we will prefer to have the same groups as the size di distribution table well, still, it depends on you. And the values here is actually already multiplied with uh, 10 to power of 10 because it's really too small. But uh, still, it gives you the information. In case you would like to compare the fraction, this volume fraction, to the area fraction, normally you could obtain with the microscope. Okay, so. You will say that's the uh, report what we can get when we have the results. Another thing, when we finish the results, actually it's already sent to SPC. Uh, because in my method here, I have the option of the SPC and I made this automatic process. So here you see the results. Uh, besides the concentration results, uh, you see also the results of inclusion analysis sent to SPC. Okay. When you have uh, here, you have uh, the control limit which I sent. Uh, uh, I set before. So. With this one, it's easy for you to, to monitor the trend of your sample to see if they are uh, within the limit or not. If you don't have that sent by default, you can still do like um, manually send. And when you do that, you will also see something like when it's out of limit so that's what we see here see calcium aluminum ratio is too low lower than the specified uh, uh, limit so that's something which is useful when you have um, option of SPC directly connected with uh, the, our OXAS software. Uh, the concentration normally for people who already have this statistic um, data uh, control center, no, then normally no problem, you already know. But for this, it's quite uh, new. You will see this so here. You see the difference here I, I set already the control limit and here as uh, example uh, we don't set anything but no problem as long you send it to spc uh, software start to generate the the wrong chart and uh, you will see the trend of the uh, samples okay so that is uh, spc what you can do and uh, after the two sample analysis, of course, you can, as I did before, uh, export all the two samples to Excel to make your own comparison or study. Otherwise, if you don't do that, uh, what you can do, I, if, I rem if you remember, we have another software. I open here as we said, Spark Explorer, who people, for the people who would like to make uh, some offline investigation. 
what you can do from here. Uh, you have all the channels listed here. So you can have the plot, of course. And uh, you can decide to use the wrong chart or use the histogram in order to study it. The most important, you have some statistic um, calculations here uh, in this software. And you can decide which number or which data set you would like to use in order to do the statistical calculation that's here. And then uh, you have the normal statistical calculation um, as average, as standard deviation, uh, or minimal or median, something like that. But here is not the way we calculate as we applied in OXAS for inclusion analysis, because the average or standard deviation here, including all the, you see, the peak, the baseline intensity, so it's including everything. That's not what we want. We want is the normalized uh, average uh, intensity average and normalized standard deviation. So you see the, the one you hear, it's quite different. Uh, so that here is 75 around, here is 600 around. So it's totally different. But here is the, uh, I need to move it. Here is the, the way we use for calculation. And then you have the possibility to calculate the number of the peaks according to the uh, defined threshold here. And calculate the insoluble uh, ratio uh, calculated uh, for this element. So for different element, you will see all this calculation is the same calculation as we did for uh, inclusion analysis. Okay. So that's one way we can use the Spark Explorer. There will be another way you can do it. It's, uh, you remember we made the two samples. So, okay, now I want to compare the two samples. Uh, I select the results. I select some interested channels and uh, I want to make some wrong chart to compare. Uh, okay, it's not so, now it's uh, easier to show. You have all the interested channels plotted. Uh, for, the first, for the second sample in the second line, in the second line. And for the first uh, sample in the first line, for the all uh, four elements. Now, just by look at it here, it's already quite easier to distinguish. Mm. For the sample two, actually, I really have mm, much more peaks for magnesium. That's some quick uh, evaluation you could have already based on this grid view. We call it grid view because it's uh, several grids like that. And now if we would like to make uh, additional comparison, what we can do, we can select and compare select charts. So by this way, you can see for each chart, you have the uh, same as before calculated uh, normal distributed intensity average and standard deviation. It's already calculated. And uh, for each chart, we, ha we have also the possibility to calculate the number of the peaks according to this defined threshold. It is here. It can be moved like that, or it can be defined here. But the most important, you see the uh, red color. Oh, maybe that is not so easy, but this one. You see the red color changes according to the threshold we define. So to make it 
simple. By this way, we can see clearly what would be the um, difference between the two samples. And uh, if now we don't want to compare two samples, we can compare just the one sample, different uh, channels. Now we have all the channels listed here. And the same, we can activate for the peak count of showing for all the samples, for all the channels. And then we are able to like that to investigate what would be the coincidence. And uh, now for adjust the some parameters, people can play with the threshold now to see uh, by which, which way we can get more coincidence or oh, it's supposed to have more coincidence or not. So that's the way we can play with this uh, offline investigation uh, tool.